without a shadow of a doubt that with, w Iran will take a nuclear weapon. They will use it to wipe our ally Israel off the face of the map, and they've stated they will use it against the United States of America. Look no further than the Iranian Constitution, which states unequivocally that their, admission, their mission is to extend jihad across the world and eventually to set up a worldwide caliphate. We would be fools and knaves to ignore their purpose and their plan. Congressman Paul. Obviously, I would like to see a lot less nuclear weapons. I, I, I don't want Iran to have a nuclear weapon. I would like to reduce them because there would be less chance of war. But to declare war on 1.2 billion Muslims and say all Muslims are the same, this is dangerous talk. Yeah, there are some radicals, but they don't come here to kill us because we're free and prosperous. Do they go to Switzerland and Sweden? I mean, that's absurd. If you think that is the reason, we have no chance of winning this. They come here and they explicitly explain it to it. Uh, the CIA has explained it to us. It said they come here and they want to do us harm because we're bombing them. What, what is the whole world about the drone being in Iran? And we're begging and pleading and how are we going to start a war to get this drone back? Why were we flying a drone over Iran? Why do we have to bomb so many countries? Why are we in, have 900 bases, 130 countries and we're totally bankrupt? How are you going to rebuild the military when we have no money? How are we going to take care of the people? So I think, I think this wild goal to have another war in the name of defense is the dangerous thing. The, dangerous, the danger is really us overreacting, and we need a strong national defense, and we need to only go to war with a declaration of war and just carelessly flouting it and starting these wars so often. Speaker Gingrich, and, and, is Congressman and the Paul. Point would be, can I respond to that? Can I respond? And the problem would be, the greatest underreaction in world history if we have an avowed madman who uses that nuclear weapon to wipe nations off the face of the earth and we have an IAEA report that just recently came out that said literally Iran is within just months of being able to obtain that weapon. Okay. Nothing could be more dangerous than the comments that I, we I just heard. Answer. All right, 30 seconds. There, there is no UN report that said that. It's totally wrong on what you, what you just said. That, that, is not, that, that is not true. They, they produced information that led you to believe that, but they have no evidence. There's no, been no enrichment and of these bombs. And if we agree with that, if we agree with that, the United States people could okay. be at she, risk she, she of our took national my time, security. So I'd like, well, I'd like to finish. If she thinks we live in a dangerous world, she ought to think back when I was drafted in 1962 with the nuclear missiles in Cuba. And Kennedy calls Khrushchev and talks to him and talks him out of this and we don't have a nuclear exchange. And you're trying to dramatize this, that we have to go and, and treat Iran like we've treated Iraq and kill a million Iraqis and 8,000 some Americans have died since we've gone to war. You cannot solve these problems with war. You can solve the problems if we follow our constitution, go to war, only when we declare the war, go in and win them and get them over with instead of this endless fighting and this MSI too that we have an uh, enemy all around the world. But as president, I, think we've been pretty, I stand on the side of peace thank you. the American people. We've been pretty liberal with our friendly ding. Um, Mr. Speaker, uh, you have been openly critical of the United Nations. For example, on the topic of Palestinian efforts uh, for statehood at the UN, you said, quote, we don't need to fund a corrupt institution.